please like and comment on the video below. That will allow me to produce better quality videos and more of them in the future. So it's Ascot, it's Tuesday, the first uh, race day at Ascot. I'm really excited, I'm just desperate to get stuck in. I want it to start right now. I've done all my preparation, I've looked through the spreadsheets, I've looked at previous year's videos, uh, reappraised everything, looked at the car to try to understand what I think is going to happen during the day and how that's going to happen and I'm about as ready as I can be. I just want the thing to get started. So I thought I'd do a, a video diary, I thought it'd be quite fun to document my journey through the week, uh, some of the highs and lows and you know so you can see things as they unfold and you know it, it, I don't know if you'll learn anything from it but uh, hopefully you'll get a feel for how things are gone. This morning I went out for a long bike ride and I basically I didn't do anything else I just really chilled and it's amazing how exercise can really sort of get you in the right move. It, the, um, I'm sure it's the endorphins of, of decent exercise lift you a little bit and that just sort of clears your mind and makes you feel just that little bit, bit better so did that this morning um, really sweated it out in this heat and uh, got that out of my system got all the anger out and just I'm very focused on making it work today so we'll see sort of what we can pull out but um, yeah I'm, I'm about as ready as I can be uh, saw some people uh, at the hotel at the gym uh, on their way to Ascot so you know it's all building to this point in a couple of hours time where I can actually sit down and start actively trading so really looking forward to it and I'll update you as we go through but this is the start of Royal Ascot this is day one before a single market has been traded. Now given the weather this year this is going to be my secret weapon. It's an air conditioning unit. It's a really old one actually um, but it's incredibly effective at cooling the office down. So while I'm in the office this week I'm going to be closing all the doors and turning this up to full blast so I can uh, keep a cool head uh, in what should hopefully be some decent markets. Uh, you definitely don't want to lose your head or get hot headed and this is going to be my secret weapon this week. So one of the things I try and do during a big meeting is to get myself in the zone and one of the ways I achieve that is to get to the gym every morning and uh, it's been a beautiful week this week so no excuse this week and by getting out there and getting into that routine getting all my frustrations out through a workout whether it's a bit of tennis um, the mountain bike or you know going for a, a walk or whatever I want to do it's nice to be able to do that first thing in the morning. So I get up, I don't bother to shave or anything. I just head straight to the gym first thing in the morning. So you know I've always been an advocate for seeking opportunities and finding them in the most unusual of places. And I've noticed every day that I've been coming this week that there's been a bus parked out here at the hotel. And um, it's guests of Longines who are going to um, Ascot. And uh, when I came back from the bike ride today got changed and thought I would go down there and um, just go and be nosy and see who it was and it turns out it was a bunch of, uh, of sports stars, ex-footballers and a number of different types of people. So the interesting thing is that um, I got chatting to them and recognised that I talked to one of them probably two or three years ago and um, that uh, just led off into all sorts of conversations. We're talking about analytics and all sorts of stuff so I'm going to be meeting up with some of these guys uh, after Ascot, maybe in the next month or so. And we're gonna continue that discussion. But like I've said before, you'll be amazed where opportunity pops out, but you have to find it. You have to look for opportunity. It's the same in trading. The opportunities are everywhere. You just have to find them. And if you look at the coincidences in inverted commas that occurred today, the fact that I was here, that I've been coming each week, that I belong to this particular gym, that I took an interest um, in what was going on and that I actually made the effort to go down and uh, have a chat with them as well. So yeah, uh, opportunities everywhere, you've just got to find them. So we've reached Thursday now, we're on day three of Royal Ascot and yesterday actually went really well and got off to a great start and it sort of tailed off a bit but I seem to have picked up a lot of money off of other uh, meetings this year as well. They're, it's curious because generally I don't do the evenings um, after Royal Ascot, but this year I seem to be picking up quite use, reasonable chunks during the evening. But the problem is it's so busy and uh, I'm pushing myself quite hard and I've actually got a bit of a uh, swollen glands at the moment, which I'm taking some painkillers for today. Um, so I don't know if that is related to how hard and pushing myself or the lack of sleep because of the heat but the heat is gone today so things are a little bit more relaxed but you'd think I'd be shouting from the treetops um, on social media after a day like yesterday but in fact 
after I'd finished the session, I was just so tired, I didn't want to do anything. So I'll probably post up a few things today about how well yesterday went. Um, but when you're in the thick of it and you're in the zone, you just want to carry on. You don't want to be distracted, so you pretty much discard everything else. But yeah, yesterday went better than I expected. Today, um, being Thursday, the prize money drops off and the interest in the markets will probably drop off as well. So I'm not expecting much today, but we'll see what we can do. It's, it's been a good week so far. And it's interesting because often people sort of portray some of the stuff that I do as, as a way of promoting the software, but it's completely the opposite. I actually want to um, uh, show you that I am using it. And if you look at this week, I've completely demolished um, everything to, uh, to do with the software in terms of the amount of money that I've earned through trading is way above even the turnover that I could possibly get uh, from selling any of the software or people buying it I should say because they don't sell it people buy it uh, but it's, it's interesting to, to see that and to note that as well it's just there's such a gap such a huge gap and uh, I don't think people realize that really but uh, that's the way that it is and you know I'm gonna hopefully increase that gap today we'll see what, what can be done but I'm looking forward to getting into today gonna take it a little bit easier to start with because uh, the markets I'm expecting to be a bit weaker and then if I can figure out what's going on I'm going to accelerate into it and really go for it. So looking forward to today. So now onto the Friday at Ascot. It's a really mixed up day today. I'm really interested to see how today plays out because there are so many different aspects to it. It's going to be fascinating. Uh, you know, it'll either go really well or really badly <laughs> and there'll probably be no in between. Uh, but yeah, we'll find out. Had to do a lot of running around this morning. Had to go to the accountants and solicitors and a few other things and it was a bit of a hectic morning, which was not great because I didn't go out and exercise. So I'm slightly out of routine. Hopefully that won't affect things. I'm feeling pretty positive given how the week's gone so far. It's gone pretty well. And um, I think I could have done better on some cases. Yesterday, uh, I lost money on the first race of the day. Um, that wasn't uh, particularly pleasant. I made a complete hash of it, but then picked up the pieces from there. So every day has been different this year, and I'm expecting Friday to be very different as well. Uh, but it's been good. Um, I've done uh, pretty well overall, done better than last year. It's going to boost my year-to-date total fairly significantly. And I'm looking forward to having a rest now. It's all been getting a bit hectic as we head towards the end of the week, but I'm hoping that I can pick up a good results today. BetDAC volumes have been down a bit, Betfair has been up a bit. I haven't got close to any major records, uh, but I've been very consistent and throwing in some good three-figure totals on most races. So yeah, looking forward to today. Today's gonna to be really interesting. And I'm optimistic in terms of how I performed this week, but today is a whole different kettle of fish. So it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. So it's a Saturday morning. Uh, which must mean it's the last day of Ascot and yesterday, Friday, went really well. I was really surprised actually at how well yesterday went. Seemed volumes were generally up a bit on what I expected. The fill rate was okay, but I made the same mistake again. I, um, I cocked up the first race. I completely messed it up and it was the same as, as what happened the day before. But it didn't uh, make any difference. I just ploughed on and uh, everything was fine. It was a good day and I really enjoyed it. So uh, last night I skipped the evening racing, went to a party, didn't get back until about two this morning, uh, which is probably not the best preparation, but that's why I'm out on the bike again this morning, clear away the cobwebs, sweat it out a bit, and get back behind my desk for the very last day. And, I, and already I'm well ahead of last year, so today's a bonus for me. And if you look at the Betfair totals, um, they're on about the same sort of level as well. So they've already done what they did last year. So again, for, for the Betfair matched bet volume totals, got that out eventually, um, today is gonna to be a bonus as well. So yeah, all around, very happy with this year's performance, did really well, and I'm looking to try and top it off today. It all depends today on whether red car goes off on time, because that's just in front of Ascot. So I need that to happen, to be able to really thump through Ascot and make a big total today. So yeah, looking forward to it. If you wanna know why Ascot's so important to me as well, I took a screenshot of um, how much we'd sold across the entire Bet Angel business. This is training, software, everything um, at five o'clock last night. And the entire total, the turnover, not the profit or anything, just the turnover was less um, than what I could have achieved in one race at Ascot. I mean, that tells you everything. If you really focused on trading and um, you put a lot of effort into it, you can do really well. And, you know, I think this play on 
that I'm doing all of this just to sell a bit of software is absolute bollocks, basically. You can tell from that figure just how uh, incorrect that is. And you look at my profit for the entire week at Ascot, it absolutely dwarfs what the business can pull in. So yeah, I just wanted to put that myth firmly to bed. And the fact is that if, like anything else, you were, uh, sorry, I'm getting bitten by mosquitoes, if, like anything else, you put a lot of effort into it, you can perform miracles, you can do really big things. And that's why I do it. That's the most important thing to me. So Ascot has finished now, and uh, how was it? Well, in one word, it was, or maybe two words, it was bloody fantastic. It uh, went really well. And uh, I think it vindicates a number of things. Uh, the amount of effort that I put into preparing for these big meetings, the amount of research that I've done, uh, all of that work uh, takes a lot of effort outside of these major meetings, but it paid off pretty well. But also not going to ask it, clearing the decks, not doing any training, um, uh, turning down invites and so on, allowed me to completely focus on the meeting and absolutely demolished it. So overall, um, I'm absolutely delighted with how Ascot went this year and it seems to come off the back of a string of good results this year. Cheltenham went really well, um, the Easter Racing went really well, the Grand National, the Oaks, the Derby, I seem to have uh, got into a really good frame of reference this year and all of the preparation and everything that I'm doing is producing pretty good dividends this year and the amount of money that I'm going to produce at Ascot means I can take it easy uh, if I want to next month. I don't have to do anything spectacular to get uh, anything back and the fact is that you know that that sort of money isn't available at the smaller meetings so getting it just right at the big meetings uh, it pays a huge dividend and one that's worth sacrificing quite a few things for. So uh, yeah I'm, I'm pleased and I, I'm pleased that the research and the focus uh, was completely vindicated and overall I'm pretty delighted with the way the whole of Ascot went. When you look at the markets in general, uh, Betfair had a pretty good year, that was up on last year um, and if you do a couple of adjustments you can see that there was growth there even if you take into account races that are likely to produce higher volume. Betdac was a little dis disappointing, it was sort of flat to declining on the year so I found it harder on Betdac to get the same sort of totals I had in previous years but that went pretty well as well. I'm not going to moan about what I managed to get out of that. Required a bit more focus this year so I had to do a little bit more work to squeeze money out of the markets on Betfair but they generally traded pretty well and contrary to what I said before in fact, in fact the week got better as it went on so I know in the video that I did in the lead up to Ascot I was sort of saying that maybe Saturday wouldn't be as good but in fact Saturday turned out to be the best day of the week so you would have you know, missed out a big time if you had not traded Saturday this year. So I apologise for for maybe playing that down a little bit. Uh, but it seems to be a theme that has been introduced this year, and that there seems to be a little bit more activity and liquidity on Saturday than we had previously expected. I think it was helped this year by the fact that the race uh, that was going off before there had a nice gap, and everything ran on time. So the scheduling uh, was pretty good this year. But I think that that helped uh, tremendously on the Saturday. So. Yeah, Tuesday got off to a good start, I, I went for it but on Tuesday, uh, declined a little bit on Wednesday and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday just got bigger and bigger and I was really sticking my foot down by the end of the week. I did have this common problem though with uh, losing money on the first race or two. Uh, over, over the whole week traded 30 races, 5 um, I lost money on and 25 I made money on uh, but you know I really blotted my copybook with those really stupid uh, decisions on some of the earlier races. So I can't remember which day it was, but there was one race where on the on the opening uh, race on the card, I lost 100 quid and I never really should have. I was just far too aggressive. And, you know, I was a bit disappointed by that. The, the other losses were pretty small in comparison. And of course, the, the average profit per race was decent three-figure sums um, throughout the week. And I was very consistent. I didn't get like an absolutely outstanding race that distorted the entire total. It was just very, very consistent all the way through the week. And I was pretty pleased with that as well because that just shows that whatever you're doing, you know, your underlying strategy is generally working. So I was pretty pleased with it. Everything went pretty well. Um, no, no major alarm bells. We had some odd um, markets where the charts were all over the place, but again, they tended to be the earlier races. As the day went on, the pattern of activity tended to reinforce itself and I got more confident. And as the week went on, that seemed to be the case as well. So yeah, I'm absolutely delighted with the way that Ascot went. It's given me a lot of leeway in terms of skipping the odd meeting and so on 
um, as we go through July because I don't need to worry about that now. Um, ASCA has delivered a huge uh, boost to the overall uh, results on the year. I'm pretty confident that I'm going to end up um, ahead of last year now, uh, which is something uh, pretty special when you consider how long I've been in the market. And also, I wasn't expecting a massive total at ASCA, so to get one was fantastic. Uh, best result I've had for a few years there. And you know, while the market grew, you know, it isn't that much bigger than it was uh, many years ago. So to pull out a big result is, uh, is something special. So yeah, pretty pleased with the way it went. But of course, you know, if you work really hard, you sacrifice a few things, um, you, you would expect to, to get a payoff from that. So I'm delighted that all of that extra work and effort did pay off. And I just can't wait until the next big meeting now. As we go into July, things get a little bit quieter. There are some highlights in there, but just not anything massive. And then of course, you know, I've got half an eye now on Goodwood and whether I can pull off a decent result there. Because it'd be nice at all of the big meetings to pull together some decent results that will influence or heavily influence uh, my overall result for the whole of the year. So I'm pretty confident at the moment. I, I think that uh, I've got things about right so far this year. I haven't made any major mistakes. Uh, some of the weaker racing uh, is quite tough to work with so I'm putting a bit more focus into some of the bigger meetings. So yeah, couldn't be happier with the way that Ascot went this year. Uh, very big this year, much bigger than I expected and uh, all of the effort that I put into it was totally vindicated. Uh, turning down invitations, doing all of the research and so on and so forth uh, meant that I was totally focused on it and got a really good result out of it and that should uh, you know, give me a lot of confidence for the rest of the year. So yeah, uh, I'm going to be back again next year, I'll probably be turning down invites next year and hopefully I can get a similar result to the one that I got this year.